Hey guys, how's it going? Mr Mitchell here. In this video, we're going to go over two worked examples to demonstrate the difference between distance and displacement. Now, if you haven't already done so, check out my previous video covering the theory on this topic, and that way you'll be able to apply what you learned in that video to this one. So let's get started. Question one says a hill walker takes the following route, and you'll see that they go from A to B via this blue line here. And it says in part A, what is the total distance travelled by the hill walker? So this distance shown by the wavy line here in blue is 10 kilometres. So we have total distance is 10 kilometres. Part B says, what is their displacement relative to the starting position? Well, A is the starting position. They're starting off at A and they're ending up at B. Well, remember the displacement is going to be the shortest distance from the start to the finish point drawn with a straight line. So the shortest distance from A to B is going to be 6 kilometres in this example and we're given that in the question. But it's not just going to be 6 kilometres because displacement is a vector quantity which means we need to write down a direction with our magnitude as well. So we could say it's either 6 kilometres east or we could define that direction with a bearing and we could say that it's 6 kilometres at 0 0.90. So we've got 6 kilometres east or 6 kilometres at a bearing of 0 0.90. Question 2 says a rebellious teen takes a walk around the block to clear their head. The path of their journey is shown below. So they start off here, they travel 400 metres east, 250 metres south and then another 250 metres west and they end up at the finish point here. And the question says to find the total distance travelled in part A and part B says find the displacement relative to the starting position. So just like in question 1. So for part A, the total distance travelled, well this is quite easy and quite simple to do. All we do is we add up the distances here in metres. So 400 plus 250 plus 250 gives us a total distance of 900 metres. Part B though is not as straightforward because they're asking for the displacement relative to the starting position. So what we want to find out here is the shortest distance from the start to the finish point and a direction. So the direction is going to be a bit trickier than in question 1 because we're not just dealing with a straight line along one of the compass directions. One way to do this would be to draw a scale diagram, so using the scale diagram method. So what we need to do first of all is choose a scale. So the scale I'm going to choose here is 3.3 centimetres to equal 400 metres. And the reason I've chosen 3.3 centimetres to be 400 metres is because when I had this picture printed out on an A4 sheet of paper, then measured the distance from here to here with a ruler, I found that that was 3.3 centimetres. So to make things a bit simpler, we can find what 1 centimetre is. So 1 centimetre is equal to 121 metres, and we find that by dividing 400 by 3.3 to get 121. So 1 centimetre is 121 metres, and then what we need to do is measure the distance from the start to the finish point with a ruler, and we can then use our new scale to work out what that size is in metres. So drawing our line from start to finish, we can then measure that distance and if you do that you should find a length of 2.3 centimetres. So we can then convert back from centimetres into metres using our scale here, 1 centimetre equals 121 metres. So 2.3 centimetres is equal to 2.3 times 121, which gives us an answer of 278 metres. Now, we're not finished. We've got the magnitude of the displacement, but we need the direction now. So using the scale diagram method, you will need a protractor for this. So let's draw our compass points at the starting position, as that's going to help us. So there's my compass points. So north, east, south, and west. You could label them in there if you want to. And to find the direction as an angle, we're going to use bearings. So remember, for bearings, we need to start at the north direction, 0, 0, 0, and move in a clockwise direction until we reach the resultant vector, in this case the red line. So we're going to start off at 0, 0, 0 and measure with a protractor the angle going from 0, 0, 0 round to the resultant vector. And if you measure that with a protractor, you should find an angle of 142. So that means that our bearing is 142. And that's me got my magnitude and my direction. So 278 metres at a bearing of 142. That's all for this video, folks. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it one of these, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Whoa.